Hey everybody, this is Kevin Wallace, and in this video I want to show you how we can access online Cisco's DevNet Sandbox. This is where we can go to get some hands-on experience with some fairly expensive gear, and we get to do it for free. Cisco's doing us a huge favor. Now, this is at their DevNet site, and I actually felt a little bit guilty about this. I would go to the DevNet site and I would do some things, but... I wasn't really a developer. So I was at Cisco Live and I was asking one of the guys from DevNet about, hey, is it all right to use this for training? I mean, this would be an amazing resource for people learning about Cisco gear or is it sort of reserved just for developers? And they let me know that no, it's not just reserved for developers. They want anybody to come use this. They said that it would be great to use it for training. They encouraged me to create some uh, training videos to show people how to go out and leverage the Cisco DevNet Sandbox. So with a huge thank you to Cisco for doing this, let me show you how we can get access to the Cisco DevNet Sandbox so that we can go out and do some labs there. And we're gonna focus on doing a series of collaboration labs. Now let's hop out to our browser and see how we connect to the Cisco DevNet Sandbox. You could open up a browser and do an internet search for Cisco DevNet Sandbox, and you could find it fairly easily. Just to make the navigation really easy, I created a shortcut on my website, kwtrain.com. You can just go to kwtrain.com slash sandbox, and that's going to redirect you to the Cisco DevNet Sandbox site. Now you need to log in. If you don't have a login, you can set one up. If we click on login, Notice that there is a register now if you don't have a free account. If you do have that free account, you can go ahead and get logged in. You have to be logged in to take advantage of the DevNet Sandbox. And you can see that we've got a variety of technologies that we can play with here. We're going to be focused on collaboration. What I would do here is say get started. This is going to take us to the menu of the different sandboxes that are available. Now, by the way, when you're taking a look at this video, it's probably not going to match up with what you see right now if you were to log in to Cisco's DevNet Sandbox because they are continually coming out with new topologies. And you can scroll down and explore some of the different options available. Now, again, what I want to do is focus on collaboration. Let's go into collaboration. And for people working on their CCNA in collaboration or their CCMP in collaboration, at the time of this recording, those curriculums are based on Cisco Unified Communications Manager version 10.5. Yes, there are more current versions available. Here we see 11.5. But as of right now, and this is late 2016 when I'm recording this, as of right now, the uh, CCNP and CCNA collaboration tracks are based on 10.5. And as of late 2016, the CCIE in collaboration track, it's based on 9.1. So that's an option for us as well. But for a lot of the lab exercises that I'm going to be suggesting you, attempt, you could really play with a variety of these. Most of the things we're going to be doing can be done on any of these different platforms. There will be a few different menu options, but largely the theory is the same. But I'm going to go in and I want to reserve this one at Collaboration 10.5. Now, it's possible that you'll go in here and you want to do your lab, but it will say something like, well, we see it down here. It might say that this contains a resource that is currently unavailable. Somebody might have it reserved. And if that's the case, if I say reserve, and I go ahead and say reserve right now, it might come back and say that it's not available. It's already currently reserved. But if it does that, it will allow you to select a future time where you can get your reservation. And this particular lab or this particular sandbox gives me two hours of access. And if I didn't want to do it right now, I could specify. There was a little edit button over on the right-hand side. I could specify when I wanted to have my two-hour block. And we'll give it just a few moments here to establish that reservation. And it's going to take a little while to set up. We see the basic topology here. It says it's estimating that this is going to be set up in about nine minutes. But we see that I've got a Cisco Unified Communications Manager publisher server. There's its IP address, 10.10.20.1. I've got a subscriber as well, making up a cluster, 10.10.20.2. I've also got a Cisco IAM and Presence server. We see its IP address here. We've got a Windows server as well. We see that we're all connected to this same VLAN. Now, in order to access this gear we do need to VPN to the Cisco DevNet site. And I'm probably going to be using Cisco's VPN client. We can go to the VPN access tab, and it tells you how to download the Cisco AnyConnect VPN client software. Now, I've done that, and I'm running this on macOS Sierra at the moment, but it's available for Windows as well. Let's click on that. 
And you can see that it's available for Windows, it's available for Mac, it's available for Linux, but you can download, if you don't already have it, the Cisco AnyConnect VPN client. That's what we're going to be using to connect. And it also comes with a link where we can go through this installation guide for how we set up the AnyConnect client in different environments. I won't scroll through there and make you dizzy while I do that, but you'll want to print that out or read through that. And let me show you what that looks like. Let's go over here and here's my AnyConnect client. It's going to tell us the address to put in here, but let's go down to our settings. It does recommend that we uncheck this bottom box that says block connections to untrusted servers. So we're not going to check that box, or if it is checked, we want that to be unchecked. Now, let's see how our reservation is coming along. Now, by the way, it tells us that we're going to be sent an email telling us the VPN credentials. That may not work for you. For whatever reason, I rarely, if ever, get these emails, but we don't need them. Check this out. I can go to Output, and it's giving me a step-by-step -step description of what's happening as this is being set up. We can also click on Activity. And we can see what's going on here in the background as these servers are being set up. And here in a few moments, it's going to say that an email is being sent to the user. Well, even if I don't get the email, the important information in that email is going to be displayed here in this output window. Again, the way I got this window to pop up is I simply clicked output right here. And this output window came up. And this is going to tell me what I put in my VPN client. And it's going to tell me the username I use. It's going to tell me the password to use. And it's only valid for this session. You're not going to be able to use those credentials to come back later and say, I think I'll connect now. No, it's, it recreates the user every time you set up a reservation. And we're still in the setup mode. It says we're estimated that we're going to be in this mode for about six minutes. I won't make you wait through that time. I'll just speed things up. And after we get connected, I will highlight for you here on the output screen the VPN credentials that we're supposed to be using. So I'll see you back after that happens. Well, I sped things up for you a bit there so you didn't have to wait through all the all the setup, but it does tell me that if I want to connect to this VPN network, here's the address to which I'm going to be pointing. I'm just going to copy and let's see if we can paste that into our VPN client. Yes, I can. Excellent. I'm going to say connect and it's going to ask for credentials, username and password. This is my Cisco DevNet username, but what password am I going to be using this time? Let's copy and paste that as well. I'll do a copy and let's paste that in. We'll say OK, and let's see if we get connected to the DevNet sandbox. That's looking good. I think we're connected. Now, even though we're connected, Notice it says we're active here. As soon as we're connected and as soon as we're active, we're probably not going to be able to reach our communications manager servers or the IMN presence server because just because they're powered on, they take a while for all the services to start running. In fact, let's try it out right now. We've got an IP address of 10.10.20.1. I predict if I open up a fresh browser and I go to 10.10.20.1, I predict that it's not going to work. Let's see. We get the main screen, but if I try to go into Cisco Unified Communications Manager, we get a 404 error message. That's normal. Let's not be concerned about that. It will take a few minutes for everything to get started on that machine and for us to be able to log in. While we're waiting on that, though, let's go check out some more of the documentation that we have. Here's the AnyConnect to VPN connection guide. So after you get that message, it tells you, in fact, I showed you some of this earlier, we uncheck that box and we're, we're told about how we can use that client to connect. Let's go back to the Collaboration 10.5 Lab, and we see that we've got a sandbox user guide. This is worthy of, of printing out or perusing through. It's going to show us how to get connected to the lab. It's going to show us the topology, and I believe down toward the bottom, it's going to give us some very valuable IP address information. Here we go. Here we see the IP address and the username and the password to get logged in to our publisher. There's its IP address. There's the information for the subscriber, for the I'm in present server, and for our Windows server. Excellent. So this is going to be really valuable information. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and jot this down on a piece of paper. My username to get into the administrator is administrator. And my password is Cisco PSDT. And that's going to be at 10.10.20.1. 
Subscriber is going to be at 10.10.20.2 if I need that. Looks like we have the same credentials. And my present server is going to be 10.10.20.17. In fact, I may open up a tab for each of those. Let's open up one for 10.10.20.2. This is our subscriber. While we're waiting on that, I'll do one for 10.10.20.17. Let's go back and refresh our publisher. It's still not ready. The subscriber, if I try to go into Cisco Unified Communications Manager, it says, I want to continue even though we're using a self-signed certificate. Excellent, I'm able to log into the subscriber. I'm gonna make it a bit larger so that we can see it. Let's check out the I am in present server. It's still trying. Let's give our publisher another opportunity. It's still not ready. Tell you what, I'm gonna pause the video for a few more minutes here to let everything become active, and then we'll come back and make sure that we can log into our servers. Well, I've waited a few minutes now. Let's try our publisher again. That's looking better. Let's make it a bit larger so we can see it. What about our I am in present server? Let's see if we can get logged in here. And we just say that we'll trust the self-signed certificate. Everything's looking great. Let's see if we can get logged into these servers. Administrator with the password of Cisco PSDT. And we're successfully logged into our I am in a present server. And in future labs, we can explore some of these different menu options. Here, we just wanted to make sure we could get connected. What about the subscriber and publisher? I'll just do one. Let's go into the publisher. I'll say administrator, password Cisco PSDT. And let's see if we can log in. And yes, we can. Let's not be concerned about these license warnings. The uh, system that we're using at the Cisco DevNet Sandbox, it is using an evaluation license, but that's okay because these things get reset about every two hours. So we'll not be concerned about these. The great news is though, we have access to this very verbose menuing system, and we're gonna be doing some labs where we'll be exploring some of these different options. Just right now, let's just take a look at one thing. Let's go under device and phone. Cisco does have some phones pre-configured for us, and we can do a find to see what's available. We've got several phones predefined for us here and we'll be exploring some of this in future videos. But this video was just showing us how to get connected to the Cisco DevNet Sandbox. We'll go out here in our labs, we'll accomplish the specific lab tasks, and when we're done, after the two hour period of time, things will be torn down for us automatically. And by the way, some sandboxes aren't active for two hours, it depends on the particular sandbox, but typically it's gonna be about two hours, and when we're done, we can just wait and be timed out. But if we want to be uh, good network citizens, I suggest that we practically log out so that we make the reservation available for someone else. So to do that, I'm going to go under reservation and I'm going to say I want to end my reservation and I'll say OK. And then it's going to take several minutes to tear down the reservation. It's not going to be immediately available for someone else right away. You see that we're in the tear down state now. And I would recommend that we spend a few seconds doing that once we're done with our lab task. If we have more time left, that way other people can get in and start using that equipment. And notice as we're being torn down, it also tears down the VPN connection. But that's a look at how we can go out and access the Cisco DevNet Sandbox for collaboration labs. If you want to learn even more about Cisco collaboration technologies, just click the link in the description or on the right side of the screen, and I'll send you more training videos. And if you don't wanna miss any of my YouTube videos, be sure and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.